Now, our next guest joins us in what, let's be honest, has been a tough week for him. Announced this week that Paddy McCartan will be on the long-term injured list, so won't play again this season. Paddy, firstly, thanks for coming in, mate, because obviously we're going to be asking questions to you that are not a great deal of fun to answer because you want to be out there playing footy. So, firstly, great to see you, mate. No, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. How are you going? How are you going? The fact that all you want to do is get out there and play footy, and obviously due to the concussion situation, you can't. So, firstly, how are you, mate? Um, yeah, not great, to be honest. Um, it's been tough. It's been a tough few months. Um, yeah, I haven't really done a whole heap. I haven't been doing a lot of anything, really, and that's probably been the hardest part. Um, yeah, I've sort of lost my footy identity a little bit, but then also um, my identity as a person as well, just because I can't do stuff. I can't, like, um, go to the supermarket when it's busy or um, go to, the, like, a cafe with my girlfriend or, like, drive my car or just stuff like that. So it's been hard, but... Um, yeah, the hard thing is that there's no real time frames on it, so hopefully I'm better next week, but I could be better in a year or six months, I don't know, so um, yeah, it's been tough. That's a tremendously honest and open answer, and we appreciate that. You're saying you can't do those things, is that due to the physical limitations due to the concussion? Yeah, so I just, I have a real like light sound sensitivity, um, get really bad headaches and stuff, um, which are common symptoms with concussion, but generally... Um, they sort of wear off by now. So it's it sort of lasted a bit longer than I've had before. And people say that I've had a few and stuff like that, but I've never had anything like this really. I've generally been back within, you know, a week or two of them. So, um, yeah, it's been tough. Um, and, you know, coming to the footy and stuff like that, mm. I haven't, like, oh, this is only the second game I've been to this year just because this sort of environment's a bit hard for me to be in. But, um, yeah, it's just yeah, one of those things. Hey, footy aside, are you worried about your physical state like if that was me I'd be really worried about where I was physically does it worry you I know you have done a lot of research and, mm. and reading but footy aside are you concerned about the fact that you're not feeling well within yourself oh absolutely yeah um, yeah very very concerning um, for me and then I think for my girlfriend for my family um, it is because yeah I'm sort of just a shell of a person that I was really like I'm sort of just completely different um and it's, yeah, gone from sort of one day when I was playing to within 10 seconds being different, so... Dif- different uh, in what way, mate? Oh, well, I just can't do basic things, really. Um, so whether that's, as I said before, like going to the supermarket or going to a cafe or going out for dinner or I'm sort of just, like, not the same as what I was. So that's why it's hard and, like, footy aside, um, yeah, I'm sort of just... I've lost my identity as a person a little bit, which is, which is hard. That affects your confidence then as a person? Is that what you're saying as well? Your confidence when you talk to people or you go outside or is it just oh, the fact that it's a, phys- it's a physical limitation? Yeah, well, yeah, it definitely affects my confidence because I can't do stuff that I used to be able to do easily. So um, I don't know if it necessarily affects my confidence that like, I feel like I'm going to be bad at doing it, but it's more like you can't go somewhere without feeling like, oh, geez, maybe I'll not be able to do this, I might get a really bad headache and like not be able to perform what I want to do, whether that's going to the supermarket or... Pa- Paddy, I don't so want... What? Sorry, just one more for me. Sorry, Dak. I don't want to create a headline with your answer to this question, but when you're going through all that stuff, fingers crossed you wake up tomorrow and you feel fantastic and you're going to have to make a decision at some stage with your chosen career whether you want to go back into that and put yourself back in a situation that you are now. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Um a few, I've spoken to obviously a lot of specialists, a lot of doctors and stuff, and I think, well, firstly, how many concussions I've had, um, and it's, they're all different, so you don't necessarily relate, oh, just the number of concussions you've had, that's what you have to make the decision based on. Um, but yeah, definitely with how I'm feeling and how it's been three months, um, and that's a long time to sort of feel how I've felt. So yeah, you've definitely got to weigh everything up, and um, you know, hopefully, as I said, there's no time frame on things, so hopefully in two weeks I'll be better, but... Yeah, I just can't put any time frames on things, which is hard. What are what are the professionals saying? And is there any medication? I mean, what what, yep. or is it just purely rest? Nah, there's a variety of things, and that's why it's hard as well because there's no um, set like sort of manual on these things. It's all different, and you get different opinions from everywhere, which is hard because you don't want to be getting too many opinions because then you sort of waver and things like that. But yeah, I'm on a bit of medication just because I've found it really difficult to sleep for the last sort of few months. So I'm on like melatonin and another sort of tablet which is um, used to help sort of sleep and things like that. Why do you have trouble sleeping? Oh, just the headaches um, and things like that. So like the first sort of month, six weeks, I just couldn't sleep and I'd wake up in like pools of sweat and stuff like that um, most nights. And then 
they sort of thought, well, because that's happening a lot, that could be affecting how my head's recovering as well, my brain. So they got me on that stuff and it's helped a bit, which is good. Um, and I'm definitely having days that are better than... Because the first sort of six weeks was just every day I was staffed um, off my head. And then now it's sort of a bit more regular, which is good. Um, but yeah, it's still probably the worst is still as bad as what it was at the start. I, th- I think I, I think we admire your honesty with your answers, Paddy, and it gives us perspective of the impact that you're having to deal with on a daily basis. And, and with what you're describing, do you, do you, are you able to get to the club or is, is that challenging and part of the issue, which is yeah. clearly having an impact with regards to your footballing identity, but mm. also the identity of you as a person? Yeah, absolutely. No, it is hard. I've probably, on average, been in there maybe like one or two hours a week two days a week um and it's just hard um because you know going into the club where like the boys and it's same any footy club in the gym the music's pumping like lots of people in rooms and stuff like that and that's stuff that's hard for me so um yeah it's definitely hard going into the club but it's good to get in there as well because like having those connections and like going into the club it gives me a bit of a purpose and that's probably something i haven't had a lot over the last sort of three months so yeah how heartbreaking is it patty to think that you're uh, mightn't or shouldn't play footy again um well that's yeah i mean i haven't really thought about that too much like that i might not but i don't know really like i've said to a lot of people that playing is going to just be a byproduct of me feeling better again and i spoke to kobe stevens who obviously went through something similar last year and a few guys and he said that it's really hard to make any decisions on things when you're feeling like how i am now so and that's what a lot of the specialists say too is they don't, they don't really give you a whole heap of answers or sort of like time frame solutions because they don't want to sort of do anything while you're feeling not well. So hopefully, you know, I'll spark up in the next sort of couple of weeks and then you go from there and yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, just in terms of the days where you do feel better, are you able to get out and go for a walk or is it yeah. any type of exercise that you can do? Yep. So, so if, with the specialists, they give me sort of some exercises and stuff which are more brain related. And then, um, you know, the days where I'm feeling all right, just try and sit on the bike for 20 minutes and go for a bit of a walk just to sort of keep me stimulated. What, um, what type of brain-related exercises are they? Oh, like some conversion stuff, which is more like things with your eyes, um, some breathing stuff, um, some, I forget what, vestibular, the vestibular system in your brain, so some hand movements and things like that. So there's a lot of different things. Um, and, yeah, I'm sort of doing that every day, um, and that's obviously going to help too eventually, so, yeah. You made an Instagram post, I think, a week or so, Paddy, where mm. you talked about the complications, the medication you're having for your concussion is having with your diabetes mm. and how impactful that is. Can you explain that? Yeah, us? that's not necessarily the um, medication I've had the whole time. They just thought that maybe giving me a cortisone in the back of my head might um, help. Um, I, I can't explain to you in detail. I won't try to explain in detail what it, what it would do, but... They've tried that with people sometimes that get really severe, like migraines and headaches, and um, they wanted to just give it a go because I've got nothing to lose, really. So they tried that, and then because cortisone is a steroid, it can affect blood sugars and make them go really high, even for people like that don't have type 1 diabetes. So it sort of stuffed my sugars around for a week, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but um, yeah, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Speaking to Paddy McCartan on the Sunday Rub. Hey, Paddy... <sighs> This is tough. This is clearly tough for you because you obviously want to get back and play footy and, and we all universally hope that that's the case and you find confidence and enjoyment again. But I'm assuming that this must be really tough for your your girlfriend mm. and your family to see the impact that this is having on her partner and your parent's son and your brother's brother. Yeah, no, nah, it has been tough. Which probably compounds it to some degree sometimes oh, for you too. Yeah, absolutely, because that's that's really hard for me to see my my girlfriend who like she's she's been unbelievable like she's been so good she's been my full-time carer basically for three months and probably put a lot of her life on hold to look after me um and then my parents as well like they've got my brother tom who mm. sort of had a bit of stuff kind of at the start of the year my brother charlie who's um you know he's an absolute champ and then me as well so it's i mean as, as you guys would know as parents it's always hard to sort of see your kids go through stuff but um yeah, there's a lot of ways to it, um, which probably does compound a little bit. Um, and yeah, it's, but I'm, I've been so lucky with support I've got at the club and my girlfriend and my family especially, they've been unbelievable. Paddy, you're talking about and explaining to us the physical effects of concussion and how much of an effect it's had on you. We hear so much about, in the modern world nowadays, about mental health. How are you dealing 
with the mental side of the situation where you can't do something you mm. love um, physically but mentally as well, that something's been taken away from you. <coughs> you. Do you get things put in place so you're in a relatively good space in your mind? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got some really good people at the club that are really good in that, in that area um, and they've been fantastic in supporting me. Um, and I think another thing that I found at the start was, uh, I've said before, I'm not great at telling people that I'm struggling. Um, just because footy clubs are sort of that environment and people that I respect a lot and things like that, it's hard to say that I'm really going through a tough time with my head. Um, but just finding people I can sort of vent to and tell, you know, this is how I'm feeling, this is how I'm going, um, has been really important. That's something that's definitely helped a lot as well. So, yeah. So, so what's blue sky for you when you're having a good day and you're out walking around and, mm. and things are good and you're viewing where you want your life to be? Yeah. What is that? Um, well, just back to what it was, hopefully. Um, and as I said, there's a lot of water to go under the bridge with a lot of things. But, yeah, hopefully just back to exactly what I was doing, just playing footy, feeling like a normal human being, being able to do normal things and, um, yeah, just feeling good. So that would be yeah, ideal and I'm, it'll, I'm sure it'll happen. But the hard thing is that, yeah, as I said, there's just not a lot of time frames and things like that with this injury and that's just the nature of it. Um, but can also make it hard at times to go, oh, geez, when is it going to be better? Is it soon? Is it far away? Is it close? Yeah, that's just sort of the hard thing about it. Paddy, are you having the brain scans? Yeah. And are, they, are there any answers or solutions or um, oh, I've had I've had the scans. There's not necessarily solutions on there. There's things on the scans and they sort of... Do they concern you? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. How I, do you mean there are things on there? Oh, scans? there's just sort of abnormalities on there. Um and that was sort of a few weeks after the last head knock. Um, so, yeah, I, it's always concerning to see things like that. Um, but they're obviously very confident that that stuff will dissipate and go away. So that's also great as well to hear. And I think the one thing with this stuff is you can obviously take things really negatively or you can just take it on what the specialists say and sort of have confidence in them and confidence in the footy club that they've got, you know, my back and all that kind of thing and sort of just try and have a bit of a positive outlook on it. So... <laughs> That's what I've tried to do, and um, it's been tough at times, but, uh, yeah. Just, um, just just, take it back to your playing, and you said you're out, except for the last one, for a week or two, and this is not trying to uh, make a queer or anyone. Do, do you think in any of those times that maybe you've come back a little bit early, in hindsight, mm. and then the extension of that, do you think at times in those games maybe you've misjudged things, your judgment was a bit skewed, and then you've sort of gone to a marking contest and you've clashed heads and... You know, you're a little bit off. Is, is anything like that in hindsight? Um, it's a good question about the judgment. In terms of the coming back early, I wouldn't say so. We've got a really diligent team of docs at the club. Um, so I wouldn't say I've ever been... I've, well, I've, I've always been honest, I think, on how I'm feeling. Um, and I would never play if I didn't feel like yeah. I was right, especially with my head. Yeah, yeah. Um, I probably meant in hindsight looking at the judgment. You know, you, you felt good, but going out there, you just didn't quite... Mm, no, I don't think so. No? no I don't think so. No, no. that's right. Um, yeah, it's a good question. Though. I mean, it's always hard for me to look back, especially at the moment when I can't remember some stuff from did a week ago. But um, yeah, no, it's a good question. And I think it's something that probably players deal with a lot at the moment because um, potentially they don't want to let you know the team down or the club down. They just want to get out there and play. Um, and potentially at times that might come at you know cost of them. So I was being so healthy. Or, you just mentioned there. So you have short-term memory loss? Uh, yeah, at the start I was sort of struggling a bit just with things um, and I, like over the sort of, it's been three months so it's a long time um, but yeah, early on I was struggling a little bit um, but towards the back end now the things were just lingering a lot of um, like headaches, my headaches and just the light and sound sensitivity that stuff's really tough. How are you going now, Paddy? Like just being in, even in this environment there's obviously lights. Yeah, um, oh it's tough um, and that's sort of why I haven't really come to the footy much this year, um, and I want to. Um, but no, nah, it's the thing. It's a, it's a sort of a, you know, there's two things to it. Like it's tough for me to come here and sort of be with like there's a lot of noise and a lot of people and a lot of sounds and stuff. But then also like I got up this morning, I'm like, oh, I'm going to the footy today. Like gonna catch up with you guys and like see the boys play and sit in the box and. So like, it gives me something to look forward to, a bit of purpose as well. So, and, and, and walking in here today, I remember you came in here with us on a Sunday last year and you blew us away because you talked about diabetes and mm. we had so many messages from parents, from kids saying, oh, wow, mm. that my kid's just been diagnosed with diabetes and you really 
led the way there in that discussion. And I know a lot of people thought, well, I can still do these things because we heard Paddy doing it. Did you come in here today thinking, is that just you to be an honest and open person? Because we won't do an interview like this all year that will have the impact that what you're telling us is now having. So do you come in here, Paddy, and think, right, I'm just going to be completely honest with these boys because it might help other people? Or is that just you as a bloke? Um, oh, I, I think something, as I said at the start, like it's hard for me to tell people that I'm struggling and something that I've spoken about with like my girlfriend and my family is just to be honest with how I'm going and I think yeah I sort of did come in today thinking I'm just going to because it would be easy enough for me to bat it off and go yes it would yeah I'm sweet like I'll be hopefully playing again and all good and like I'll be sweet but um, I actually don't really know and, I, and that's not a reflection of how I've actually gone the last three months so I just thought I'd yeah, be honest with it. I take my hat off to you, Paddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely um, take my hat off. There's not yeah. much to say in this situation except you talked about the blue sky. We hope you get back to that blue sky situation absolutely. really soon, mate. No, um, thanks, boys. Appreciate it. I hope you. the footy club goes well, but more importantly, hope you're up and about and just enjoying a happy, healthy life sometime really soon. No, good on you, boys. Well thanks, Paddy. Me. Good on you. Straight well to Paddy McCartan <laughs> in the box. The Rush Hour's Billy Brownless is a gentle giant. So you are looking good. Until he gets in the kitchen for a bake. Germany! Out of the World Cup, Jim. Suck <laughs> your crowd. <laughs> oh. They should have learned from the last time they wandered into Russia. 1941, Jim. <laughs> that went well. <laughs> Billy's Bakes, part of Triple M's Rush Hour. And you can hear every single explosive bake by downloading the Triple M app.